They Save the World, Episode 1.13, They Rebirth. If you stop your worrying and go to sleep like the rest of us, at that. Nobody has time for all that useless stuff right now, she said. Raven then threw a pillow at Ed, and everyone just went to sleep afterwards. When 2 a.m. arrived, the alarms about to turn went off, waking up everyone inside the building. Let's go! Time to get ready, move out, said the senior members. Everyone got dressed and reported to the auditorium. As you all know, today's the day of the invasion. I hope you all had a good night's nice rest because once we leave the center, we'll need your absolute and undivided cooperation until the war is over. The priority of our mission is simple. It's to stop the board, especially their leader colleague, from using the day rebirth as a means of ruling the world by any means necessary. Let me remind you all how vital this task is. If this mission fails and we are unsuccessful, we have no future. Making this our first ever s rank mission. That aside, there are some of you who have second thoughts about proceeding with this mission. If anyone has any objections or would like to withdraw from the mission, please speak now or forever hold your peace. A few seconds later, there was no sound made whatsoever. Alright, well first off, I'd like to congratulate you all for making it this far and for bearing with us when the reward pitted the masses against us. There were many who quit and gave up on us when it happened, but I thank God for each and every one of you. The committed few we have today is only because of you all. I have faith to this day that without a doubt we will win this, exclaimed Nathaniel. Everyone in the audience gave it a game of applause after he said that. Now, the staff and I will begin passing our team's individual orders so everyone and everything can proceed as planned, he added. The higher-ups then began passing out paper throughout the uh, auditorium. A few moments passed and they finally got their teammate. They only passed out papers to Justin like Christine. Uh, Justin's order is, is stated Use three extra people to go with you to the western side of the inner city. Two, venture past the woods in the outskirts and head towards the highest tower in the um, inner city. Christine's was basically the same old as so as she and her group was instructed to go east while Ike was instructed to go north, the center. After everyone came to a mutual conclusion, just as a uh, group consisted of Ed, Matthew, and Ruth. Ice group uh, consisted of Dante, Aaron, and Kanye. Lastly, uh, Christine's group consisted of Ray, Regina, and Ione. After their team was uh, finished choosing members, if they had chooses the four strongest team members of J.S.H. to Adam in this hand-to-hand fight with uh, Khalid. Alright, is everyone done? If so, everyone get to your groups and head to the big exit, said Nathaniel. As all J.S.H. members, Headed towards the day exit, Nathaniel told everyone to do their best, and he dispatched them all. JC scattered everywhere throughout the area, waiting and lurking in the shadows. The mate decided to uh, regroup and wait together in the woods uh, at least well, but one last time before they all went their separate ways. Yeah, the sun's coming up. I'm getting sleepier and sleepier, Sam Matthew. I wouldn't advise it actually, replied Ike. We have less than an hour until we move out. Hey, you notice how red the sky looks, asked Aaron. I've never seen it before like that. Yeah, it's kind of like a bloody red. Now the clouds are getting darker and darker by the second, replied Raven. <laughs> Must be doomsday, joked Justin. So Ike, I see you've been working out for some time, so I mean, you, you changed the material since a lot since the first time we met. You ready to take down those other guys? I was scattered, uh, scattered after Ionia's remark. Oh, I could be pulling them, exclaimed Bruce. <laughs> no, Bruce, not like that. Uh, I reiterated, um, Ionia. Look out, exclaimed, uh, Dante and Kage as a giant drone, uh, crashed through the woods, destroying everything in his path. Crap, not those things again, exclaimed Dante. I could use his power to destroy it instantaneously. Alright. Yes, this, that must be our cue. Let's move out, explained, uh, uh, Bruce. As instructed, the three groups proceeded to their destinations as planned. Each team is risking life and love, running and dodging from straight bullets and laser beams firing at them. 
before each of them knew it, legions of pseudo and armed forces battled out against one another in a full all out, all out deadlock. At that moment, Matthew gets sidetracked by a steel pine as he starts shooting them one by one. We can't stay here, man, explained uh, Justin. We got to get to the city and stop Talib. I know, I know, but they just keep shooting and shooting, explained Matthew. Elsewhere, Talib uses his newly awakened eye to pinpoint the location of Nathaniel. However, Tali soon detects Isa and the other uh, team members uh, have seemingly handedly destroyed his entire uh, drone armada and are fastly approaching the abandoned city. Tali retires by using his tongue one last time, uh, once, to, once again animate the most powerful creature there was, Silhouette. The team members run towards the abandoned wreckage in the city to face off against Tali. However, they are stopped by an inky white entity with flaming eyes and a large wicked sound. A large group of strongs go ahead with Tali to assist him revealing the family's nearby location within the abandoned city. He's just a little ways to the north behind those buildings that were in the studio. And there seem to be others guarding him as well. Thank you. Good work. Tali replies as he extends his hand to the group as, as they all begin uh, screaming wither and pain. They all soon fade into black as they turn into shards for Polly to consume. Afterwards, he gained extraordinary powers, causing him to glow and become stronger than Jay Say or anyone else has ever witnessed. However, with that power, Polly has lost every last trace of his humanity. I finally understand now, explained Polly. Nessus did stay Nico and Stain and we consumed each other. But she couldn't be any more wrong. This isn't blind insanity. It's much better. My mind, body, and soul is overflowing with unimaginable power. Hey, Khalid, exclaimed a voice on the, from the horizon. How's it going, Pascal? replied Khalid. How long has it been, partner? Those eyes. You're no longer human, said Pascal. In sudden fear of what his old friend has just become. Don't you see? I'm now adapted into a higher plane of existence, now replied Khalid. I'm now an individual that possesses the sublime power of the gods. You become a monster. I can do nothing more for you, replied Pat. It's time to end this. Pat removed his sunglasses and um, as his eyes turned purple. That's the telepoka, uh, Pat, uh, Pat explained. As he uh, attempted to emit a ray of light from his eyes. However, Holly shoots uh, Pat both his legs, which immediately cancels out his attempt. So you intended to make me brain dead at the cost of your power, clever and colleague. However, the quickest ways to end any illusion to use them are physical attack. Soon afterwards, other Jays and military run to a scene as they violently shoot Colleague countless times. He regenerates molecule by molecule, then retaliates by sending down fiery comets to destroy many of them. When the other uh, Jays and members retaliate with their powers, Colleague and down a flame of tornado that engulfed and annihilated his foes. Pass watches in horror as there is physically nothing he can do to prevent this disaster. Lastly, military tanks arrive and surround Khalid as they shoot him simultaneously. However, Khalid activates an impenetrable force field as he lifted his hands in the air and caused a gaping black hole to split in the sky as it sucked every last tank into its abyss. Then, Colleen appears right next to Pastor in a matter of seconds. Well, what are you waiting for? asked Pastor. I'm to finish me off. I could, replied Colleen. But I'd be deprived of you of living the rest of your life in shame because of your incompetence. As glared at Colleen with severe hatred in his eyes. There's, um, there's so much free here, uh, said Colleen. Let's see what we can do about that. Kali waved his hand, and all the destruction turned to put clear paths for him to walk on. When more authorities arrived to confront him, Kali just snapped his fingers and nothing but their clothes remained afterwards. Um, as, Kali, as he walked along his route to the jail, Kali gets a call from Nathis uh, on his phone. Why did you break the taboo? as Nathis. Don't tell me you're actually planning on doing what I think you're about to do. Yes, Master. You shouldn't call that a taboo, Mr. Colleen. 
I say is the gateway to awesome power. Today is the day I show them that I was meant to become the true right from Carol. I was meant to be all alone. This wasn't part of your agreement, replied Nessus. I can't believe you of all people would do such a thing. So I guess so I guess that now means that all those things you promised those people on the day were birth was a lie? And now it's your turn to play Q and A with me, replied Tony. No, if nothing else, I'm a man of my word. And I promised those people to make their dreams reality, I actually meant it. And to get that accomplished, I have to succeed no matter what the cost. Just by saying that I know what you're about to do. You won't stop my anything, said Nessus. You're about to awaken the little set, aren't you? Looks like you saw right through my little screen again, you my colleague. Yes, that's the plan. The true plan behind this whole thing. All your little school friends are nothing more than just a cannibals, right? Or your scheme the entire time. Ever since you were so kind enough to grant me the power to control this entire army, I no longer require your substandard services. Oh, and before you try to stop the invasion, don't bother. Because my soldiers no longer take orders from you, as long as I'm their commanding power. Well, in the meantime, farewell. You have been a more or less great help. Elsewhere, Christine and her group keep heading east until they eventually cross paths with Nethys. No way, you're one of them aboard, exclaimed Christine. Let us through, or else, exclaimed Raven as the group prepared to attack Nethys. Hey, come down, replied Nethys. I'm not your enemy. Wait, what? exclaimed Gina. Is this a sort of trick? Are you lying to us? That's INA. The truth is, I was dismissed by the man himself. He decided to part from me after he got his power, replied Nethys. Who are you? replied me, asked Christine. I'm Nethys, she replied. Kali's former partner. I take it you're trying to stop Kali from me. Miss Actors to the reverse, correct? Well, I'm not standing in your way, replied Nathis, as she then stepped aside from Team A's path. Hold on. You said you were Nathis, asked uh, Gina, the animated construct who was sent to save humanity from their kidney doom. Why are you involved in this? I thought your job was to help us all, not to do the opposite, asked Raven. There are two answers to that, uh, replied Nathis. The first is that I'm bound by my dimension tone. My creator used it to assist the individual who found me first to find me, which in this case was Kali. Because of the tone's power, I'm forced to obey her master no matter what. I want you all to be honest with me. Are you try are you all trying to kill Kali? Four girls uh, remain silent for a few moments. We don't know. That's not going to be up to us, I replied Christine. Listen, please hear me out, replied Nethis. Whatever happens, please don't kill him. What are you getting at? asked INA. The entire plan for his whole scheme was so that he could die on this day and awaken the Will of Set, replied Nethys. Will of Set? What's that supposed to mean? asked Raven. There are three notable aspects of the ancient tyrant set storms, darkness, and chaos. Each of those he carefully concocted into his plan since he animated me for my tone. Ali represents the, st the storm aspect of Set which symbolizes his wrath and even towards Mindy, especially in the thing. He also, uh, he's also using a Grim Reaver monster from his tone named Silhouette, which represents darkness. He's going to use that thing to fuse with in order to bring about Seth. Lastly, his entire legion of soldiers to are all complete aspects of chaos, which is the only thing this war is meant to bring about. By putting Khalid into a death-like state, he'll basically trigger Death's consciousness, causing Khalid, Silhouette, as well as the soldiers still controlled by him to join together, forming one immortal gigantic plug of consciousness, Death, and form Nathus. So if Khalid lives, we still have him, Silhouette, and his legion of Steel to deal with said INA. However, if he dies, we have to fight this Will of Set thing? No matter how you look at it, there's no positive sign to either choice. So this means we're going to have to choose the lesser of two evils, replied Christine. They all thought for a moment until Raven expressed her opinion on the situation. Hey, it's not this time weird, but I'd rather deal with them all together than scattered all over the place. That's just my personal opinion speaking. Honestly, I agree with her, but whatever decision you all make, you have to you have my full support, replied Nathan. But do you all really think that you can beat something that strong? I, 
guess we'll have to wait and see, replied Raven. Uh, hold on, Nephis, explained uh, Gina. In that case, what does Kali need to, need to sundown and the four crystals for anyway? That's right, explained Nephis. Kali required those ancient artifacts to get to the rooftop of the tallest building in the city to cast a portal to another dimension. Where is he going to travel to get this one wish for? Anything. Uh, and he plans to use the woods set as a fail safe so that he could that if he can't get his wish granted. Before you all go, which one of you can control the uh, force? asked Nethus. Um, me, replied Christine. Nethus gives Christine a shard that grants the user and he or she the ability to fly temporarily, and also grants great healing powers to the users as well. Wow, thank you. I'll make sure to use it, uh, thank Christine. After the two sides shared words of gratitude and concern, they parted. At that moment, Justin and his group uh, continued to venture their way to the west, on the west side of the city. Okay, Matthew. Remember that night I called you on the phone? It's something about, uh, it was about something, asked uh, Justin. Remember, I mean, just remember when I snap my fingers, that'd be your cue, okay? Wait. Oh, oh, oh yeah. That's what you were talking about, replied Matthew. Yeah, I remember. Mean, got it. Really? At a group? I don't know where a barrage of hand grenades are thrown at TST. The floor then flee from the explosives and see the gigantic ominous uh, figure appearing from the smoke. Yeah. Long time no see, explained uh, a newly created Klaus. Who are you? explained uh, Justin. You don't remember me? replied Klaus as he grabbed and blasted him across the road. By the time Justin recovers from life, Klaus picks up him up by neck yelling, What's my name? Uh, Justin is coughing and gasping for his life as Klaus comes to my name. <laughs> hey, my name. Bruce and Ed, uh, Ed and Matthew charge at Klaus and attack him with their weapons. For a moment, their attack seems effective. However, he's simply blasting them all with his next strength. <laughs> my power has no limit, weakness, or blind spot. Face it, you're all doomed, explained Klaus. Hey. I got to say you little rats messed me and my partner up that day. Now it's time to show you all what a pain worse than death. Matthew then uses his strong smoke bomb to get him and his teammates to safety. When the smoke clears, the four vanish from the top of Go on, run, hide, because when I find you, I'm gonna paint this whole city red with your blood, explains Klaus as he rests with maniacal laughter afterwards. Say, how's this guy still alive? He should be dead. Uh, Justin, that day when Klaus got crushed underneath those voters in the cameras, I saw him eject his head from his body and fall to the cliff right before he got the shark. Right before you got the shark, my dad. There's no way he should have survived up until now. That's it. Uh, the shark. Bruce, do you still have no well shark? Asked Justin, because I think that's the only way we can beat him. He just absorbs an attack from our towers. These shards may be the only thing we can use. Alright then. I'll need you to distract him while Matthew does that thing Justin was talking about, explained uh, Bruce. And that's when we'll take it from there. While hiding in the balcony of an evacuated building, um, before their Klaus is uh, put here, uh, the top of the steps are coming in the floor so they, they look up and see that he has grenade launcher pointing right at them. For real? You don't know where to stop! Explain Ed. Hasta la vista, says. Uh, he fires off rounds and rounds of grenades at the team. So, four boys, four boys seem to have vanished him. After moments later, Klaus spot Ed and which they engage in combat for a short while. Evidently in the conference, uh, favor. Come on kids, spill it. Where your buddies hiding at, Klaus? Like, like you could get me to talk and find a fatigue dead. You're talking about it. I'd rather put my fist in your lip. Yo, I thought he repeatedly bashed the edit. They had to get the property and just around. At that moment, uh, Bruce comes, uh, he rests using the last power at high speed to store in this area and strike the clouds with his uh, mace of lightning, weakening his defense. Wow. Klaus is disoriented. Matthew makes a movement and shoots a stun arrow from the from, from the back view of Klaus 
Yes, perfect, exclaimed Jester. He then jets toy Klaus with his shower, um, shoving it into his torso, giving his limitless power more power. Jester overcharges Klaus, blasting him to the sky and back to Earth. When Klaus recovers from his fall, he gets back up, but this time in the form of a frail, powerless adolescent boy. What? What happened to my power step the weekend, Klaus? What did you do? Ed and uh, Justin uh, then well in the Klaus saying, Look at you, now look at us. Before Team Steve struck their final blow on Klaus, he was saved by Oracle Studio, who reflected them all by saying, You all already won, just let it go. Wait, you're the ones from that day. Hold it, exclaimed Justin. They all ran towards them, but it was too late as the oracles uh, teleported away. Just when their battle seemed fruitless, Justin found Neo, Klaus, and Shard on the ground and took it with them as they all headed closer to the city. Elsewhere, Flint senses an old rival and friends approaching his location and decides to report it to uh, Khalid. Hey, Khalid, do you, re do you read me? says Flint. I received insight on a small group of JSA members heading toward the heart of the city, accompanied by one strong replica, surprisingly. A replica? How's that even possible? asked Holly. I thought those things were just some ancient myth. Who is it? You're not gonna believe it. But it's that white haired kid, that white haired kid from earlier, uh, replied Flint. So, there was something special about the boy after all, replied Holly. Flint, you know what to do. Meanwhile, Holly. Contact Silhouette asking asking him how it was with the fight with the senior members. He replied saying that they were easily defeated and how they can even touch him. Ali then comm commands the Azor to take to make sure no matter no one else makes it beyond a certain point until he performed the ritual, which Silhouette immediately accepted. Later Ike's team eventually heads straight towards the center of the battlefield until they were intervened by Flint. As his group continues to venture on. I explain, everyone look out it's, uh, as the destroyed buildings around them begin to shatter and explode. Uh, Ike then repelled the falling debris with his ultrasound waves. After all, the, vis the zero visibility smog had vanished. Um, Flint appeared to them sitting down on a chair with his legs crossed in the middle of it all saying, Hey guys, it's been a while, hasn't it? Flint, is that you? Replied Kali, I mean, Kage? What are you doing in a place like this? What's your goal in trying to help the enemies? Well, yes it is me, replied Flint. I'm here to keep you guys from intervening with our leaders assassinating your leader. And I don't really have a goal in mind, just bring chaos and power is all I need. What do you mean, assassinate, uh, replied Dante. You mean this entire event is a setup? What? No! Uh, exclaimed Flint sarcastically. We're just throwing a welcome home birthday bash for Jay say of course it is genius you see Dante you and your sister don't know how good you guys have it your father doesn't have what it takes to even be called a leader which is why I love to see the look on you two's face when you realize that he'll die a completely broken man when then began to laugh nicely so I stated to him do you really think you're gonna make it out of here in one piece after all your lies and backstabbing even to go as far as break to my friend's house. I mean, I mean, it would have been a foolproof plan had not Nate took the fake emerald to the safe and hit the real one in some parents' home. Oh, which reminds me, um, where I got these wrist tattoos, definitely. So, so that was you who broke into my house and stole my stuff out of there. Oh, you mean this little pack right here? Replied Flint. The moment Flint pulled out the uh, fruit snack, uh, out of his pocket. He was he was infernal struck by Aaron, which Flint's body flew all the way up into a conveniently placed billboard sign. As Flint was embedded into the billboard, Aaron ferociously blasted blazing flames at him. How was Flint intercepted there was chaos uh, block, which flew out the flames as uh, Flint released his stuff on the billboard. As soon as he got out, Flint then levitated uh, in the middle of the air, causing the entire ground is up to form a gigantic hole. As Ike's group began to fall into the abyss, Ike just finds his um, black drop to carry them all the state and possible. The boy has the ability to spawn a failure, because that's what I get for underestimating the power of a full-fledged replica. 
thing, as the chaotic pseudo went just right down right down the group. Um I got this to uh got this uh uh went alone. Hey, thanks for saving me the trouble attacking you guys out. I appreciate it. Let's guess what I kinda wanna ask you, uh um, yeah, I what are these replicas you keep talking about? You don't know do you my uh replicas are constant aliens that take the form and humans were in order to survive on this planet. Which, much in the same nature as the you know, only difference is you guys have not yet been born. You guys have been born. You have ever been born. You were born with the potential of humans. Some may even call, call this pseudo you know, work modeled after you all. What I'd like to know is why you join those guys. You're basically the same as the rest of us in this planet. I don't know or care about. Uh, what you're talking about, but these people you get down on stuff like this have already done so much for me. I never thought of the possibility of betraying them, unlike you. To me, that sounds like they did all this stuff because you were a replica. It's such a waste. You could have been a lot more if you joined our side. So you took the deal, immediately grabbed and ambushed like without warning and restrained them. However, before they attacked, I sent out a sound wave that literally turned those two into, into stars. And caused the ears to bleed severely as I fled and got loose. Killed him, said, uh, as the bloody speedo, uh, he sent a fleet, uh, them after I, as I, um, got enough distance between them and the enemy, he shot them all with one to two accuracy using his laser gun. At that moment, uh, not this call, but he might say that he needs to escape with the rest of them. That this whole thing is a step back, I'll leave. Woman, I don't give a lucky charm about you, I'll leave anything else for that matter. If you think I'm gonna let this miserable little cunt walk out of here alive and what he did, you're crazy. Flint immediately entered his car and continued to search for ice. As Flint continued to look for ice, he spotted him near an open field of debris. I got handed to you, Ike. You screwed at me back there. But now it's over. You're absolutely right, said Ike, as Kagi cast the shadow from his sword and paralyzed Flint. It's really over now. And, by the way, you're the worst left gun I ever met, said I. What the heck is this? exclaimed uh, Flint. Dude, over, attacked! Uh, the soldier and church, you know, then charged towards I group until they were all defeated by uh, Dante with his earth powers. Impossible. How on earth did they manage to? Flint thought to himself as Aaron used his team fist. Blasting into the air, followed by Ike Fist and Moth, then the thing's off Flint with internal thunder, which caused Flint to break every last bone in his body using a powerful sound wave. Flint then faded and flat, leaving his glowing orange star behind. Looks like that's that, but we gotta keep doing it, said Kage. Right, we can't afford to stay here by Dante. Afterwards, Ike Fist then kept moving forward to catch up with all the others. At that moment, Nathus is seen. Carrying away an incapacitated clown, the kind of about others still retreating to stay to observe how the entire meal will play out. Okay, this has been the 13th chapter called The Day of Rebirth. Uh, I don't know, probably the next chapter will probably be, uh, both, uh, the, it covers, uh, both chapters, row 14 and 15, because they're, like, insanely short compared to everything else. So, you know. Uh, they're entitled uh, Conjure Your Cells and Lion vs. Scorpion. So, like always, don't forget to share, like, comment, and subscribe for more. Thank you guys for listening.